curious what this sash means? Stick around because we're going to talk about the 19th Amendment. Hi, I'm Brianna and I am in charge of the three microlibraries in the city of Stockton, part of the Stockton San Joaquin County Public Library System. And today I'm here to talk to you about the 19th Amendment or the amendment that granted women the right to vote. This year is a really special one. The 19th Amendment was ratified on August 18th, 1920, making 2020 the centennial or the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. The right for women's votes is widely known as the women's suffrage movement, and these women called themselves suffragettes. You might be a little bit confused. Suffrage sounds a whole lot like suffering. However, it is derived from a Latin term, which just means the right to vote. For all you history buffs out there, the 19th Amendment basically states that a person cannot be denied their right to vote based upon their sex. And the right to vote was ratified in 1920, but took a really long time for American women to get there. Started all the way back in 1848 at the Seneca Falls Convention. So this convention was put together by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott, who were both abolitionists and fighters for women's rights. Basically, at this time in the 19th century and beyond, women were basically considered property. They did not have any rights. If they were married, they had even less rights and were almost a non-person. Everything that they had belonged to their husband. Even if they had had property or money prior to getting married, their husband took control of everything. They didn't have a right to property, they didn't have a right to have a job, and they didn't even have custody rights for their own children. Many suffragettes saw the passing of the 15th Amendment as an opportunity for women to keep fighting for their right to vote. In May of 1919, the 19th Amendment went through a vote by the House and passed. Two weeks later, in June 1919, the Senate also passed the 19th Amendment and then sent it on to Congress. And this is where it got a little bit tricky. They needed 36 states to ratify the 19th Amendment in order for it to pass. And of many states had and many states hadn't. In particular, the southern, the southern states were not in favor of the 19th Amendment. The 36th state to ratify the 19th Amendment was Tennessee, and it's kind of a funny story. Um, the representative from Tennessee basically received a letter from his mom telling him that he needs to vote on this or else, and he did. <laughs> and that is the passing of the 19th Amendment on August 18th, 1920. It should be noted, however, that even though the 19th Amendment passed, granting women the right to vote, it was not guaranteed. Many women still did not get the right to vote in 1920. Many states had laws that pretty much guaranteed that people of color were still disenfranchised, meaning they did not have the right to vote. In fact, it wasn't until the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that racial discrimination was addressed in voting. Historical fact for you, the last state to ratify the 19th Amendment was Mississippi, and they didn't ratify the 19th Amendment or the amendment that granted women the right to vote until 1984. Uh, you can check out the timeline of when each state ratified the 19th Amendment later in this video. some of the women who were pivotal in the passing of the 19th Amendment and are perhaps a little bit less known than its main leaders. Mary McLeod Bethune was an educator and civil rights activist. She was born to former slaves in 1875 and became the most politically powerful black American woman of her time. After the 19th Amendment passed, she organized black voter registration drives, directly defying threats by the KKK, she advised President Franklin Roosevelt and was the only black woman at the UN's founding conference. 
Mabel Pinghua Li was a suffragette and advocate for the Chinese immigrant community. She was a Chinese immigrant and became an advocate for women's rights at a young age, leading a 1912 New York City suffrage parade on horseback when she was only 16 years old. She was the first Chinese woman to get a PhD in economics at Columbia University. Lee wouldn't gain the right to vote until 1943, when Chinese immigrants finally were allowed to become U.S. citizens. Lagros Bonet de Newton was a Puerto Rican educator and suffragist. Uh, the 19th Amendment didn't apply in Puerto Rico as it was just a territory and not a formalized state, very much like Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, she fought with other Puerto Rican women uh, to boost the suffragist cause in that territory. They succeeded in getting the vote for literate women in 1929 and for all women in 1935. Residents of Puerto Rico still can't vote for president to this day. Wilhelmina Dowsett was a Hawaiian suffragist and a member of Hawaii's royal family. She successfully pushed for the chance to have Hawaiians, not the U.S. government, decide whether women could vote in elections there. It was a territory at the time, as I previously mentioned. The Hawaiian Senate passed the suffrage bill in 1919, but the House balked. Hawaiian women had to wait until the 19th Amendment for suffrage. Zipkala Sa was a writer, musician, and advocate for Native American rights, also known as Gertrude Simmons Bonin. She was a member of the Yankton Dakota Sioux Tribe and gave many speeches advocating women's rights when she graduated uh, from the missionary boarding school she was forced to attend. As an adult, she argued for Native American citizenship which wasn't granted until 1924, and founded the National Council of American Indians to unite the tribes in the fight for voting. To celebrate the women who fought so hard to grant women the right to vote throughout history, we are going to do something fun today. Uh, I found during my research that there was a women's suffragist cookbook. Now you wouldn't think that these feminists we're going to publish a cookbook, but cookbooks actually help their cause immensely by providing funding for them to gather or, um, crowds to organize, do parades, protest, and all kinds of things that helped raise awareness of their cause. So I found a recipe in this women's suffragette cookbook for ginger cookies, which I love, and that is what we are going to make today. <laughs> the butter and the sugar. And then we're going to add in our molasses. Next will be our water and our baking soda. be our dry spices and our flour and salt. And finally, I'm going to add in my fresh ginger. want to put this dough in the fridge for 20 to 30 minutes to let it cool and then we are going to bake it at 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes and while you're waiting for your cookies to cool you can go ahead and prep your cookie sheet we are just going to prep it with some parchment paper now that your dough is nice and chilled it'll be much easier to handle 
uh, you want to scoop these out in about one inch balls. If you're like me and measurements aren't your strong suit, I like to use just a simple tablespoon to scoop them out and form them that way. And after you've scooped your dough using your trusty tablespoon, you will roll it into a ball with your hands, roll it in the sugar making sure it's coated and then place it on your cookie sheet. Once you have your cookies prepared on your baking sheet, you can just take that tablespoon that we used to scoop and you'll just want to press them down just a little bit so that they'll be a little bit more uniform. And then we are going to put these in our preheated oven at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. We'll see you soon. And here they are, fresh out of the oven. If you like your ginger cookies with a little more crunch, you can leave these in for another two minutes. So that'll make it a total of a 13 minute bake time. Do leave them on the cookie sheet for another five minutes. They'll continue to cook through. And then once they're cool, you can move them over to a wire rack. For more information on women's suffrage, USA Today has a really fun augmented reality component to their app celebrating the centennial. There's also many books you can check out and the library has quite a few. Thank you so much for watching this video, going on this journey with me as we learned about the 19th Amendment and made some subversive ginger cookies.